Good morning, traders. This is Brad Matheny. Today is the 11th of September, and we are looking at an inside breakaway pattern. Let me come over here and get it. On the SPY today, we are looking at an inside breakaway in trending mode. You can see we've rolled very short term and long term into bearish trending in explosive price action mode. The markets are following along very cleanly with what I had expected. You can see the lines that I drew here before we had this big breakdown event, this big crush pattern, which changed the trend down into this pullback. We had an inside pattern here, nice little harami pattern. We had a moderate move today. Today, uh, that was yesterday. Today, I think we could see a pretty big move to the upside. Uh, and I am expecting so you can see here pre-market we're at 548 yesterday we closed at 548.79 um i'm you know i'm expecting the the spy to run into a top pattern kind of around this 560 area so you know i don't kind of like i've drawn already right over here i don't expect it to rally up you know up to these new all-time highs any longer we're in this flagging formation this is called an excess phase peak pattern and we've had one back over here and we broke out of it and looks like we're going to set up another one here so i will i'll leave these for now because these are carrying over uh the same patterns just shifted downward a bit but an excess phase peak pattern is to roll up to a peak like this to roll back down and then move into a flag. In fact, I did a whole video on this for you. Normally that flag then does one of two things. It either continues to rally up into new highs, negating the excess phase peak pattern, or it rolls downward from this area, trying to come back down to this area and then break lower. And now if this is the case, this is what would be considered number three of the type of pattern, meaning it's the setup number three, the flagging formation is setup number two, and the peak pattern is setup number one. So you have to have this peak rollover flagging lower low that breaks down below this low here, and that would set up a number three, which would eventually uh send me copy I don't know what i just clicked on so ultimately this breakdown would set up another support level hypothetically right in this area and this then level we could see the markets roll around in this level for quite a while before either a rolling upward or b rolling downward and establishing finally an ultimate low type pattern so this is the this is the excess phase peak this is number four and then this would be either number five down here or up here so this in an excess phase peak pattern we really have a uh, two types of exits okay we can either as i mentioned here we can either roll upward here and exit the excess phase peak pattern or we can roll upward in this area and exit the excess phase peak pattern or we can roll up here and exit the excess phase peak pattern lastly if all of those fail and we do ultimately come down to this lower low pattern down here. This would be our, let's call it low low, our ultimate low, the end of the excess phase peak pattern. And this would normally set up some sort of a bottom and then continue to rally back out of it. So the reality here is, and again, we have the same pattern here. So you come across here rallying up rolling down this deep low setting up a big broad flag 
and now we're rolling down. So now we have essentially two of these, two excess phase peak patterns. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, highlight this, make this very dark so we can see it, make this very dark so we can see it. And so you can see here, this low right here was below the peak here. We had the flag, we rolled out of it. What we should be doing in this particular case is if we're rolling out of this flag, we should be rolling down to break this level here and then attempt to find some lower support level that is going to act as intermediate support moving forward. So, but what we have done is we have rolled out of this flag into an intermediate base and rolled back into a secondary excess phase peak pattern. So imagine we got to here, we rolled, we reset. Now we've gone from this peak into the flagging, rolling out of it into this peak, into the flagging, and I'm expecting that we're going to roll out of it or attempt to, and we're either going to attempt to roll downward into here, or we're going to roll upward and continue to push higher. That's how excess phase peak patterns work. So the fact that we have stalled here and rolled into this pattern, if we do roll over and roll down and then roll into a deeper low, taking out this low, and moving downward, then great. That's basically a continuation of this pattern that ended back over here in uh, September 6th. But if we do find support and roll back up out of it, then this smaller secondary excess phase peak pattern takes over from this bigger pattern back over here. This is the peak, the pullback, the flag, and we will not come back down and touch these levels. So again, we, we need to see how this plays out. It's a very interesting setup, actually, because we've got nested uh, excess phase peak patterns, kind of like a nested uh, flagging pattern. Um, and I, I can see very clearly where we're at. Uh, we've got this bigger, broader context pattern, and then we've got this na more narrow, consolidated context pattern. And again, I've highlighted the areas. It's really basically outlining this area and this area as our key lows and of course we have this upper area here as our key high ultimately ladies and gentlemen those need to be broken one way or the other either going down or going up to resume upward trending okay so today is a inside breakaway i believe we're going to see a pretty solid upward move let me drag this over and again as i mentioned to you before it really comes down to what does price want to do uh, inside this excess phase peak pattern. I believe that we're looking at price moving up to this 560 area, which would set up that rolling and it could go a little higher. I mean, it could go up into the 561, uh, maybe even 562, barely just below these highs. Um, then we would roll potentially now. I believe the rolling pattern over here, the downward trend, has about a, let's call it a, a 70, 75% chance of happening. I think it's a fairly high outcome that we're going to roll right before the election, especially with the uh, government spending bill that's being held up. But I also believe that we have a pretty good chance of breaking out here. I could say maybe a 30, 25, 35% chance of a breakout if this rollover fails. So we're right now, we're trying to get to this level. That's where price has got another upward move from where we're at about four, uh, 548 up to about 559, 560 maybe. Then we're going to be near that topping pattern. And at that point, we either roll or we break out. And that's going to be around the 20th to 24th. Okay, let's go take a look at gold. Nice solid upward move, just like I was suggesting. We got up to 550, 2557 overnight. Um, could get a big move in gold. Um, so we're going to spread this back over. This is daily. Um, and again, I've been telling you, if we go up into this 2565 area, anywhere up in here,
if we get anywhere up into new highs here, just start booking your profits. I mean, in reality, this is a pretty solid move here. So, you know, you could start booking your profits right over in this area here, uh, 25, 55 or higher. Uh, but gold is is likely going to continue to try to rally. Um, it's going to try to move up into this 2565 area. And then, like I said, I think by the 19th or so, as I've drawn, um, you know, it could be up in this area, 2580. Uh, but then I think we're going to get that sudden flash collapse in gold. And I think it's going to come because of, like I said, politics and or gov U.S. government failure. For example, the U.S. government has to pass a spending bill by September 30th. And I know that, uh, um, you know, th that the House and the Senate are playing games ahead of it, trying to get what they want passed in this with the spending bill, because it's essential for the government to function right before the election to have the spending bill. So, you know what, end of September could get really wonky, really weird news. So be aware of the fact that we could be moving into a very uh, strenuous external news factor type moment towards the end of September. Okay, let's take a quick look at silver. Trying to keep this fairly tight. There we go. There's the move back up like I suspected. I don't expect it to move too much higher, although, you know, in reality, we could get up into basically a, a 25% to uh, percent to three eight two percent uh retracement of this move this is a little downside move we could run back up here to 29.75 maybe a little higher before reaching this peak and rolling like i suggested so could be up in this 29.50 maybe even you know i mean i hate to say it but we could come up here and tag off a of 30 because that would be an extreme high um, but again, I think we're going to try to roll over into this. Everything is setting up like this excess phase peak. I mean, I don't know if you can see it, but here we have a, I mean, gold has been moving downward since this area. And this is actually a beautiful excess phase peak right here. Uh, let me show you. This is a beautiful excess phase peak. Peak, roll down, flag, break down, broke through the level. Now we've gone down to this level. This now becomes our type three. So again, this is our breakdown to number three. This is our number two, the flagging. This is our number one, the peak. Now, ultimately what would happen here is that we are either going to roll down and break below this rotational this level here and head down to an ultimate low or we are going to roll around this level and then move into some breakout range now this breakout range must absolutely must take out this high level and ultimately back over here this flagging high level which i will move right across here as the rejection level. So remember, it must break out these levels to try to get out of this range. Getting up to this level does not count as end of this number three phase. It's got to get out of these levels and move into a new high. So we're getting a big, beautiful excess phase peak. And to be honest with you, I can see a little excess phase peak setting up here. So it's almost like we're getting a dual excess phase peak pattern setting up. And I've gone through and shown you, uh, shown in a video many months ago, that these excess phase peak patterns, they happen all the time. In fact, they are the basis of trending. Okay. Um, in fact, I'll maybe show you on another chart over here. Okay. So now let's go to uh, QQQ. Same thing, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I got a lot of crazy lines out here. Let me get rid of some of these lines. Um, those are from months ago. Um, okay, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that.
Okay, it's a little cleaner. I mean, but again, same setup, uh, very same setup. Uh, I can show you again. I'll try to, let's just clear everything. Yikes, go back to a blank chart and start over. But it's all still the same. So again, here's the excess phase peak pattern up to the flagging formation. Breaking downward, this sets this level as the ultimate low. We have this level as an intermediate high, and we have this level as our ultimate high. Clean, right? You guys can get that? Okay, so we're breaking out of the flag formation. We're moving downward. Ideally, what we would have is the A pattern here, or the number one here, the number two with the flagging, the number three with a potential pullback, which is really the breaking of the flag right here and moving down into this area. Ideally, what should happen here, ladies and gentlemen, is we should be attempting to try to move down to this area and then below, setting up some, some new low. That would be a continuation of the excess phase peak pattern. But failure to do that would indicate that we would be Failing to move after we break the flag, failing to take out this low means that we would be establishing a new low, establishing a secondary excess phase peak pattern. So understand that this would be a secondary pattern, another excess phase peak pattern. Try to make sure I got those about the same color. Um, and what we would be looking at here is a potential breakdown of this pattern trying to get below this level, maybe moving downward. And if this can't break below it, then it would rally up and out. So this is the, the breakdown pattern. This is essentially where we're at around the 23rd, 24th of September, giving us that potential breakdown. And what we're looking at as a potential breakdown here is if we get below this level, then we're going to come down to this level. Then we may end up down in this area trying to find some new support. If we cannot get out of these two levels, then we are going to roll downward base and try to rally back up out of this. Now, I think this basing level is going to take place right over in this area. I think it's going to take place right before the election. Uh, and I think it's going to turn into a very solid rally, in my opinion, into 2025, carrying forward with what I'm calling the, oops, the Vortex Rally. And the Vortex Rally, as I'd mentioned to you before, is a contest or a concept of U.S. dollar dominance driving this expansive phase. There's plenty of money in the markets right now to continue this moving forward. Ultimately, I think that we're going to be moving into this big, broad vortex rally that's going to move parabolic. And I think it's going to be something more along the lines of this, which means that, you know, if we follow this up and out, And again, I'm just giving you an idea of like what the vortex rally might look like. Oops, that was me moving my mouse. Then we could see a big, strong rally, very high. It could get into a very big parabolic move. And it basically comes down to the fact that, you know, here's our, our wave four pullback, in my opinion. And this is wave five, beginning of wave five. And I think wave five could last all the way to 2028, 2029, maybe 2032 or so before finding a peak. So we've got a, a long way to go. This is just a minor little pullback right now. So anyway, what you're looking at in terms of daily rotation is right in this area. These excess phase peak patterns rolling and trying to break out. Lastly, we go to Bitcoin. Okay, we're at 56,700, roughly, uh, sorry, just under 57,000, just under my 
key support area. Now the key support area, again, that 57,000 area, I got rid of a line in here, so I'll draw it again. It's pretty much right in this area, okay? And uh, we are struggling. So I'm gonna, again, warn you that a close below this yellow level indicates that we're moving downward, okay? If we get below that yellow level, we're likely moving downward meaning this 53,775. As long as we are holding in this area, we are going to attempt to roll back here to the upside with moderate pullback. Now, um, ultimately, we've got to be aware of the fact that we're going to probably hit that very short flash crash type mode probably right before the election, maybe two weeks before the election, we're going to get a little bit of a dip, in my opinion. It's going to roll hard assets and head asset, hedge assets downward fairly sharply. Again, tied around possibly U.S. government shenanigans with the budgeting or what have you. But I do believe that we are setting up a good solid base and we need to hold this area to go ahead and meander back into this upward channel. Okay. So again, I do believe that Bitcoin is going to try to move up to 65 grand and eventually break out, move to 68 and then eventually 74. We'll see how it plays out. I mean, I, I call the charts as I see them. I'm not trying to tell you, you know, I'm not trying. I don't have any vested interest in Bitcoin at all. I don't own any Bitcoin, so I don't care if it goes up or down. I'm not trying to hope it goes somewhere. I'm telling you what I see taking place within this channel. Okay, that's it for now. We'll go back to the SPY. And uh, let's get started with the day. See what happens. SPY is, again, an inside breakaway pattern today. So here we go. Inside breakaway means it'll open up inside yesterday's range and try to break out of yesterday's range. Let's see what happens.